Hey everyone, uh, I've seen a couple of posts lately about using Lazy Susans with your, uh, with your gaming terrain, uh, thanks to a, a great video that was done over on the Dungeon Craft site on YouTube, and uh, I wanted to share some tips and techniques that I've learned over the years uh, using a similar setup uh, that I made back in, uh, in 2008. Um, so this is, is my Lazy Susan terrain, uh, or terrain table that I made for use with Dwarven Forge and Miniature Building Authority terrain, uh, which is, is, you know, it was uh, ceramic and very heavy, and so I wanted something sturdy enough that I could build a whole city layout uh, on top of this. And in fact, if you go back and look at my YouTube channel, there's a medieval city terrain uh, that shows it built on top of this uh, table. So uh, this is a little bit bigger than the one that Dungeon Craft uh, did. You can see it's uh, 36 inches across, a 36 inch uh, wooden table. And it is built on top of a 12 inch Lazy Susan uh, with felt uh, pads on it to protect the table. Uh, <clears throat> there are a couple things about having a table this size. One is it's very heavy and so uh, one thing I did is I used a Forsner bit, a uh, drill bit, to drill some finger holes in here so that I can carry it, uh, carry it vertically uh, from place to place because it's kind of awkward when it's this size. Uh, the other thing is uh, it will hold a standard Chessic size battle mat. So you can put a, a, a Chessex, uh you know, battle mat on there. <clears throat> but in general, I think a smaller table is better. Uh, the one that Dungeon Craft used was 18 inch. Uh, and that has some advantages. Uh, this one will, for example, not fit through a standard door. Uh, I made the mistake one time of setting up my full city setup on this and then trying to take it downstairs uh, to my table that I actually play on and I could not fit it through the door without tipping the table and of course all the train would fall off. So this, uh, you know, an 18 inch or 24 inch would fit through a door walls, whereas a 36 inch uh, will not. And as I mentioned, uh, it's very heavy. It also doesn't leave as much space uh, around the edge of the table, depending on the size of your table, for players to have their, uh, you know, their their papers and so on, their character sheets and dice and so on. So uh, a little bit smaller size is probably better. Um, you know, this size lets you do a, a, a good sized uh, terrain setup, but again, it's got some drawbacks, some practical drawbacks. That if I were doing it again, I would probably build a smaller one. So. Uh, this one is, as I said, it's just a, a wood tabletop that you, know, you can get at Home Depot. Uh, I covered this one, uh, painted this one <coughs> with uh, whiteboard paint. And so the, the concept was I could draw on it with a, you know, a marker and, and then wipe it off. This is a, a, a wet erase marker. I uh, haven't actually used that much. Uh, at one point I thought I might put some grids uh, down on this but uh, uh, never got around to that. So instead, what I did was, um, uh, I did not make a, uh, a stone terrain uh, set up because as I said, I used Dwarven Forge that provided my, my floor pieces. But when I needed uh, outdoor pieces, I wanted to have a grass set up. And so I made basically different toppings or different things to put on top of this. So uh, <clears throat> this is uh, a terrain paper that you can get at a uh, your local hobby store or wherever they sell train supplies. And it's, it's flocked paper uh, that uh, basically I drew uh, on, uh, drew a grid pattern on, and then used a dental tool like this like this uh, to scrape away the flock so uh, you just put it down and then drag the, the dental tool along the, the yardstick and it will create these indentations in the flocking 
and so you can have squares, but it still, you know, looks, uh, you know, looks pretty good as far as, uh, you know, being able to put terrain and things down on it. I also use some of the same uh, material to make bases for trees. So whenever I put the trees down, uh, and, and these are, you know, uh, model railroad trees that uh, I just put the bases on some MDF board uh, and uh, then, you know, pasted the, uh, uh, the paper on top. So uh, that way you can, you know, have the um, miniatures go right up, right up to the trees. So uh, that's what I did for uh, my outdoor scenes. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's got the advantage of being able to spin around. You can see lines of sight uh, and, uh, you know, easily reach your miniatures and things like that. Oh, one other comment while I'm thinking of it. Um, if you have a particularly uh, big Lazy Susan like this one here, uh, you can see that there is a gap uh, underneath, right? And uh, I suppose this was happening even on small Lazy Susans. And so one thing I've found over the years of playing is that sometimes things will slide under that gap or roll under that gap. Dice will roll under there, small dice uh, or pens and things will get lost under there. So one thing you might want to consider is either putting some felt uh, around the edge uh, or, um, you know, maybe gluing like, uh, like a leather skirt or something around the edge uh, to basically keep things from rolling under there uh, during the gameplay uh, because it's kind of difficult to, to reach under there and get it out uh, during the game. So that, that's the outdoor terrain. The other uh, oops, sorry, uh, thing I wanted to uh, be able to have was uh, good water scenes. Um, and so uh, I made this piece for uh, having water scenes. And uh, what this is made of is a piece of MDF board cut in a circle. And then on top of that is a kind of a teal colored um, uh, piece of cardboard. Uh, it's actually a mat board that you use for creating mats for picture frames. So I bought it at, at uh, Michael's, I think, or AC Moore. Uh, and uh, it was a, you know, it, it's thick, heavy uh, board and it, you know, had a good color to it already. And so then I drew on that with a pen, uh, drew grids on that with a pen and then covered the entire board in easy water, which again, you can get from um, model train stores. It comes in a bag. It's a bunch of little pellets that you basically heat up and then pour. And uh, uh, I saw this style of, of, you know, kind of water technique with a, a, uh, a guy who sells, um, or at least used to sell Dwarven Forge modifications uh, on uh, eBay. I'll, if, um, I'll, I'll see if I can share a link uh, if, if he still sells it. But anyway, that's kind of what gave me the idea. But what I wanted to do differently was I wanted grid uh, grids under the water so that I could you know, position the miniatures accordingly. Uh, and uh, what I found was I, I didn't really enjoy drawing a bunch of grids. And so I didn't want to do one inch squares. And I also thought it would kind of detract from the water look. So I realized that I only needed to do two inch squares because it's fairly easy to uh, kind of position uh, miniatures in a, one of the corners of a two inch square. So, you know, you don't really need one inch squares to know, you know, where the miniature is and be able to count, uh, you know, across squares because you know these are two inch squares. So uh, the two inch squares with a thin ballpoint pen uh, drawing of the grid uh, makes the grid a little bit more subtle. Now, there are a couple things that went wrong with this, and I'll probably remake this at one point. Um, so, one of the things is the resin water, the easy water, uh, shrinks as it dries. And so, what you can see here is that the edges are bowed up of this, and that's because the, uh, the, the water effect contracted and pulled in the edges and caused it to, uh, to warp. So there are probably, there are a couple of ways that I think we get around that. 
Uh, one would be to put it on a thicker uh, surface and, and make sure that it is um, secured with clamps all around so that it, it won't be able to pull up the edges. Uh, it may still end up pulling up the surface in that case, I don't know. Uh, the other way would be to put something on the other side that kind of pulls it in the other direction so that it evens out like Mod Podge or something on the back. Um, and then the kind of the third option would be to find a resin that, uh, that doesn't shrink as much. So uh, anyway, that would give you, uh, um, you know, a, a flatter surface. Uh, the other thing that I found out which this morning when I went to pull this out from under the bed is that uh, you shouldn't store paper on top of them. In this case, I had some big sheets of graph paper that were stored upside down on top of this. And apparently the heat kind of warmed up this resin a little bit. This, this, um, this easy water can be heated up with, you know, just a hair dryer or something to melt it. And uh, anyway, just the temperature under the bed caused enough of melting that the, the paper stuck to the, the top of it. And so you can see now I've got all this, uh, uh, these paper scraps uh, kind of stuck to it that I'll need to clean off, um, you know, uh, to use this again. So, uh, again, just something to kind of be aware of. So, uh, uh, anyway, the, the nice thing about this great big, uh, um, you know, kind of water sheet is, you know, you can <coughs> set up all kinds of great, uh, you know, things with it. You have an open water uh, scene, you can set it up with, you know, some, uh, some other pieces for setting up your docks, uh, you know, something like this. Uh, you can also build, uh, if you have like Dwarven Forge or something, uh, or, you know, even your own train, you can uh, build your city uh, terrain right on top of this. And you can set up things like this so that you have, uh, say say you wanted a sewer set up you know you could set it up so that um, uh, you have something like that where you've got a sewer running through the through the city or, or underground and then you've got you know nice looking uh, kind of water effect underneath it so uh, you know kind of multiple uh, options there for you know how to use this kind of water uh, you know water terrain set up so um, uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, just, you know, some of the tips and things that I've learned over using one of these Lazy Susans. As I said, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I've been uh, talking to some of the people that build custom gaming tables, convincing them that they need to incorporate these into the gaming tables, but so far nobody's taken me up on it. But uh, anyway, I, I find them very useful for terrain, uh, particularly if you're you know, concerned about line of sight or reach issues, uh, you know, being able to spin the table works really well. And it's also uh, very good for a lot of board games uh, where you have the same kinds of issues with, uh, with reach and, and uh, you know, people being able to access all parts of the table or see all parts of the table. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, thanks for listening.